Welcome to the third video in our series of uh, videos demonstrating the new auto extraction routines in Enforce. Um, today's video, I'm going to show how we uh, basically move on from the crash barrier video and look at smaller height changes, and then this time uh, it's going to be curves. So if I just zoom into a curb here, um, you can see that the height change is obviously going to be a lot lower uh, than what we were looking at earlier with a crash barrier. So I'm going to go feature extraction as before, uh, wall and curb, and let's go create ourselves a new preset. So I'm just going to call this one curb. Now then, uh, so I'm not again going to explain all of these. I've, I've done that before in previous videos. Uh, please watch the first video that shows extracting uh, road markings uh, for more information on these. So. I'm just going to say for the time being, right, output point spacing, so maybe every two meters. I'm not going to worry about clustering. Don't worry about maximum distance. Data is quite good, so I shouldn't need too many redirects. If I do need a redirect, I'll make it a meter or so. So DZ tall. So the height, uh, you know, isn't changing a huge amount. Um, so I'm not going to change that. That uh, 0.5 is probably okay but I will uh, increase the horizontal tolerance. Um, so I'll make, make that about say 0 0.15, 0 0.15, because obviously the curb is changing direction quite sharply in places. You need to widen up the horizontal tolerance so that um, the algorithm will see that change in, in curve because they're completely unpredictable. We can't just say, go with a curve because it can do all sorts of funny things and come back on itself. So we're just basically widening um, the algorithm's um, input so that it can hopefully see the curb change direction no matter which way it changes. I uh, don't need to worry about DZ change per meter. Uh, height tolerance, max and min. So this is again, this is what defines the metric. We're looking for a height change between a boundary to get to sort of extract the curb. Um, so the curb probably doesn't need to be much more than say 0.15. That'll be too much, um, but it's the minimum which is really going to help us um, pull out the curb. So curbs are usually sort of 100 millish, aren't they? So I'm going to say go a bit lower than that, 0.8. So we're going to be pulling points out uh, where there's a height change of between 80 mil and 150 mil. Uh, the DZ change search radius. So again, this is what tells us, um, or rather, this is how we m measure the proximity of the height change. If that's too big. Uh, or rather, if it's a, a if it's a, a very sort of angled curb, then you'll need to make that wider to get the, the appropriate change. I'm going to just say make it 50 mil for the time being. Search distance. So because this is a quite tight curve, I'm going to make that. Um, let's go for a meter. See if we see if that will work. Um, so we're looking for the top of the curb at the moment. So I put it on top. Um, smoothing we can leave as is. Height difference, so again, let's make that about 0.15. Um, yep, yeah, we'll harmonize the data to 2 mil. And Douglas Perker 0.2 is probably a bit tight, so let's go 0 0.5. And everything else should be good. Right, so now I just need to drop a seed down. So the data, or rather the height change, sort of starts around here somewhere. So to test out the uh, settings that I've got now, I'm going to do add seed and drop a seed not too far back because there might not be enough data. So let's try here somewhere. And what I'm expecting it to happen, or what I'm expecting to happen, sorry, is I'm expecting it to stop just at the drop curb because essentially we're losing our DZ change. So if I hit extract, get rid of the uh, debugging data. It has indeed stopped early because of the um, drop curb, which is what I was expecting, so that's fine. So I've got KB in there already. So I'm just going to right click that and choose commit and continue. Okay, so let's drop that in. I'm now going to move to the other side and then rotate it so it sits on the curb again. Just to retweak that. 
Okay, and um, let's see how far it gets this time. So I think there's another drop curb around the corner. So I'm expecting it to stop here somewhere. And it does, which is good news, because that means the our metric is uh, behaving as I expect it to. So I'll commit that. Okay. That's okay. And we'll move it on to the next one. Don't know if I need to tweak that. That looks. Um, let's just rotate it. There we go. Right, so this one is a bit longer. It's going to go around there, hopefully, and extract. Okay, it looks to have done its job properly. I'm just going to turn off some of this debug data. Uh, I think that's done its job. So I will just hit commit all. And that actually does the job for me, so I can then click clear. Just inspect that. That's okay. And if I now look in the modeler, drag that in. Here are our data points following the curve. Obviously, you need to uh, pop these uh, drop curve bits back in, um, but obviously, that's at the moment another stage above and beyond the auto extraction. And that concludes our curve video.